welcome back to another video in our series on situational awareness. Once again, my name is John Krajewski, and today I'm going to shift gears a bit and start talking about how do you build some of this content using InTouch 2014 and also System Platform 2014. Most of this content can start very simply by utilizing our symbol wizards, and that'll be the focus of the discussion today is using those symbol wizards that we've provided. There's really only four steps to using the symbol wizards, and before I get to too much talking about it, I'm just going to go ahead and show it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a bullet graph. You might recall that a bullet graph is a replacement for a gauge. We talked about that back in our dashboards video. And here I'm going to embed the bullet graph. My next step is configure the wizard options. The wizard options appear over here in the properties panel. Here I'm going to change the orientation to vertical and I'm going to change and remove the title. I'm not going to go through every option on all of these because it'll just take too much time. My next step here is I'm going to edit the strings. So I'm going to change that main label string and the best way to do that is to substitute strings. So substitute strings. From here forward I'll probably just use the uh, shortcut of control L when I'm substituting the strings. So I'm going to change main label to my stuff. It's not particularly important what I'm changing it to here. I'm just showing you that you can change it. I'm also now going to link the data. So I can link the data by accessing the custom properties. And here are all the properties that are exposed by this wizard. So here I'm going to use InTouch data in my example. So I'm going to pick InTouch colon dollar second to link that data in. And I'm going to change the rest of these variables up for something that shows a little bit better. So I'm going to change the alarm severity indicator to um, severity 4. Change the bad max to 10. The good min, 40, the maximum, 60. I'm going to change the minimum. Actually, I'll leave it at zero. Target, I'll put that at 50. Now I've gone through all the steps to create uh, to create and edit the bar graph uh, symbol wizard on this on this overview display that I'm creating. So I'm going to go ahead and save the work I've done, and I'm going to go see if it's working. I'm going to pop over into the runtime here. And sure enough, everything looks like it's working fine. So I've got the data coming in. The bar graph is showing. It's showing me the, the bad indication range, the satisfactory good range, my target value. All of my value labels have been set appropriately. So I'm good to go. I'm going to move off now from the bar graph and use the meter. So I'm going to swap back over to my editor. And I'm going to pick the meter object. I know that that is in the meters category. I'm going to pick the meters. So I've gone through my first step. I've embedded the wizard. Second step, configure the options. In this particular case, I'm just going to change the type from flow to temperature. Now this uh, here, I'm going to edit the strings. So I'm going to choose edit strings, which is substitute strings. From label, I'm going to say this is my temp. Got it. Now I need to link the data. To link data, I can do it in actually multiple ways. One of the first ways I can do is I can come in here and edit them individually through the custom properties. Or what I can do here is I'm going to hit cancel there, and I'm going to do substitute references. This will go through and look at all the references. This has some predefined references, which are all set around me dot, me dot PV and the range max and the range min. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all the me's with a simulation object that I've got running called PLC sim and replace all of those and say, OK, now I'm going to save, swap back over to runtime, have a look, and my temperature meter is, is animating appropriately. Now I'm going to use a pump. So I'm going to go back over to my editor and I'm going to embed a pump. So that's in the equipment section. I'm going to pick out the pump, blower, and rotary equipment and drop it on the screen. Now, once I've embedded it, configured the wizard options. Here you can see it starts as type pump, but there are other types here, and you'll see that the graphic will change based upon the type. But we're going to leave this as pump. I'm going to link this. Uh, let's see, do I need to change any of these options? I'm going to leave the basics. You can see that there are a lot of different options you can choose on the pump. I'm going to leave this one as is. And what I'm going to do is I'll change the strings. So I'm going to just use Control-L to access the strings on this. So Control-L. 
I'm going to change the label to my pump. I am going to link the data. Again, I'm going to go to the uh, custom properties on this one, which is control M. In this particular case, the equipment state here, which is defaulting is false. I'm going to change that. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll use that intouch tag again, the intouch colon dollar second. Colon dollar second. And I'll say only when you're greater than 30, just to give me a Boolean result. Okay, so now I should go ahead and save that. Make sure that that's working. And you can see that my pump here, you can see it just changed because it swapped over. So it's going to show white, which is the passive state when it's less than 30. And it'll show uh, gray, which is the active state when it's greater than 30. I'll come back a little bit later and we'll see that that changes there rather than making you watch it 20 seconds. So while that's going on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump in a bar chart. So I'm going to come back over to my editor. I'm going to pick my symbol wizard. I'm going to go to the dashboard tools and I'm going to pick bar chart, which is the first one up here. Here I'm going to say only want five variables to show instead of the default of which is 10. So I'm going to pick five variables out and you know what I will get rid of the heading again let's see that was the title I'll just get rid of that just for the purposes of getting rid of some clutter what I'm going to do here when I uh, edit strings in this case here is I've passed beyond configure wizard options I'm going to edit strings I'm going to edit some of the format strings so at the num at the top here see there's format strings for um, the number of values so what I'm going to do is I'm going to again do control L I'm going to get rid of this and just make that one a zero and get rid of these pound signs and just make those one pound sign there because I don't need the tenths place here, let's say. Um, and again, I'll leave the rest of it the same. I could have edited these B1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I'm just going to leave them alone here for the sake of making this move along. So now I'm going to go back down to linking the data here. So I can link the data again through either the substitute references or through the custom properties panel. I'll go back in through the custom properties here because they're all the same. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in a reference to my PLC sim dot triangle. I'm going to copy this again because I'm going to use it a lot. And triangle one in the first one. Triangle two in the second. Triangle three in the third. Triangle four in the fourth. And triangle five in the fifth variable here. This chart range increment, uh, I'm going to leave it five, and I'll explain when we go to runtime what that does. Um, we could adjust this up or down, but I'm going to leave it at five here and explain to you a bit what that does. So I'm going to save that. That's linked now. I'm going to come back over here to my runtime application. What the chart range increment does, it's the even n uh, numeric value above the current value um, <clears throat> that which it's shown. So for example, this currently says it's 90. It went up to 95. So it went to an e even increment of 5 above the current highest value. So that's how it's used in this auto ranging here. Um, this particular list is going to can sort itself. So what I'm going to do here is I think by default it doesn't. I'm going to go back over here to the wizard options and show this sort order. Sort order, actually it is sorting at large to small. That is the default. So if I come back over here and look at it in runtime, it will sort it from the top being the largest you see which is currently B3 so even though these are now changing their orders based upon which is the largest don't have to change that if I don't want it to sort all I have to do is come back over here come over here and say sort order none and save that change again come back over and look at it and now it's not going to alter the state. They're always going to be one, two, three, four, five in the same order they're shown here um, and show the values. So I can change whether I sort it large to small, small to large, um, and utilize that bar chart to just quickly make progress. And for the last one I'm going to show today is the polar star. So I'm going to go back over to my editor. I'm going to go back to my embed symbol, pick up a polar star. Some people call these things uh, radar plots, polar stars. I've seen different names here for this one. 
So in this polar star here, I've got a four spoke polar star that I'm going to use. So I'm gonna go ahead again and we'll start with ours. I've embedded the wizard, configure wizard options. In this particular case, I can turn things on like alarm borders if anything's are in alarm state. I'm gonna not do that here. I'm actually gonna leave it alone. I'm not gonna change any of the wizard options. Edit strings. Uh, I don't have any strings being shown right now, but you actually can uh, ha include labels. I think I have the labels false. I can turn them on true, so I can add string and edit strings for each of them. I'm gonna leave them false for now, just to simplify it for the purposes of what we're showing here. And linking data. So again, remember I can link data by going into custom properties or substitute references. Control E will bring up my substitute references. So let me uh, first select my element, hit Control E. I'm going to get rid of all these me's again. Again, go to that simulation object from me to PLC sim. Replace all of them. And you can see what has changed is I've got four process variables and four set points. And it's changed those out there. And now what I'm going to be able to do is hit save, go over to runtime, and see this thing working. The green line is showing you the set points and the blue line is showing you the actual process variables. So again, this polar star is pretty effective to see when multivariables are starting to move away from their expected set points. I don't have to, I don't have to have any numbers here at all. And in case here, I didn't even have any labels, but what I can quickly see is when that has moved away and my simulation is showing you now that you know, several um, three of the values were well below their set point. This was just a brief demonstration on how simple it is to use these symbol wizards. All the symbol wizard content here, you could change it yourself, you can manipulate it, you can build your own. But I'm going to leave that for another video for another day. Hopefully you enjoyed this time and I thank you very much.